today, before you came over, you had certain expectations yeah. of the RF7. And now that you heard them, did it exceed your expectations or were you disappointed? Okay. Let's start with Eric. All right. So for me, I didn't have any expectation. Uh, and, uh, but 15 years ago, yeah. uh, I was shopping for speaker yeah. and I was listening Klipsch versus Paradigm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like at all the, the, the Klipsch. Mm -hmm. uh, and the V-curve was too much pronounced. Mm -hmm. A lot of bass, mm -hmm. very high uh, heights were uh, very strong mm -hmm. and they were lacking mid and mm -hmm. I'm a mid lover okay. right so mm -hmm. my message to you people mm -hmm. is um for for people who, that make a long time you didn't hear new uh the 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 Klipsch, the new products from Klipsch yeah. take your time and go listen listening them even mm -hmm. if you already heard them many many years ago because for yeah. me in yeah. my my memories it's not really the same sound anymore okay yeah. fair enough good menu uh, for myself, those speakers, I had some expectations, but it, it, it was less than what I heard today. So they, you exceeded they, your expectations. They exceeded, okay. they, they exceeded my expectation for sure. Okay. Uh, why? Because they're doing everything quite well, mm -hmm. and the bass is just amazing, mm -hmm. and they're fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, like we were saying, uh, uh, at one audio what? show, yep. we were looking, I was looking at the Klipsch Forte in the Heritage series. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me if I go and buy them today, I for sure I'd, I'd, I would like to listen to, 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 to both. Compare a, B, to yeah. compare because I, I, they're really amazing. Among the Klipsch owners I know, there are three things in common when they talk about their speakers. First, they love it almost as much as their significant other. Second, it moves them emotionally. And third, it gives them that you are their life kind of feeling. Can you guys leave a comment and tell me what you think about Klipsch? Now, whatever you think about Klipsch, the fact that they are so successful means they have voiced it in such a way that appeals to a lot of people. Don't believe me? Just go to any audio show and it's like going to a Taylor Swift concert, always pack the clips room, and you have to almost fight your way in. I know recently the retro looking clips speakers have gained a lot of attention, but if you are shopping for a clips speaker, do not overlook the clips RF7-3. Remember, not all of us like McDonald's burgers. Some of us might prefer Burger King, despite McDonald's being more popular. It is all a question of taste. So, why did I get the RF7? I mean, the speaker has been out for a few years. Now, it's because when I made the video on the Klipsch R8000F a few years ago, I got a few comments, you know, and they said, you think the R8000F is good? You ain't hear nothing yet. The RF7 will run circles around it. So this got me curious, and finally, after many years, the audiophile gods finally answered my prayers. So for those of you who want to be a YouTuber, this is what you receive at your front door. You know what? I'm too old for this, man. A hundred something pounds. I need to bring this in by myself. Oh boy. So, were the comments about RF7 able to destroy the R8000F true? Or should I curse those subscribers for making me bring this heavy speaker back home? Without a doubt, it is true. Whoever left those comments recommending me the RF7, thank you, but I still hate you. So, Dennis, an audio buddy of mine, dropped by the other day and within a few minutes, he agreed, man, these RF7 are levels, that's with an S, up from his friend's Klipsch R8000F. The bass on the RF7 alone was shame the 8000F. The live feeling, the sound stage, man, you're in the big leads. So before we begin today, I want to take a moment to thank Mao No for sending me their wireless microphone. Now the number one complaint I get on my channel is the audio sometimes sucks. Or does it suck all the time? Well, today I will be using their mic later on in the video. If you have the ambition of starting a YouTube channel so you can get clips to send you speakers for review, Spend good money on a mic first. Now I know you're not here to see a video on microphones, but I have to show you this cool feature. See, when I want to charge the microphone, I will put it in its casing and then plug a USB cable to it. 
it has that James Bond vibe. I got the WM821, which is a bit on the expensive side. Well, you know, when they ask me which one I want to try, my cheap blood would obviously choose the top of the line. Not that I ever need the 300 feet of range, but I now have bragging rights. I have a bigger mic range than yours. I bet no other YouTuber can top me on that. And if you think all YouTubers should invest in a good microphone, click on the like button. So the Klipsch RF73 is a speaker designed and made in the USA. It uses a one and three quarter titanium diaphragm compression driver and two 10 inch drivers in the iconic copper color. It has a sensitivity of 100 dB and is rated to go down to 32 Hertz. Price at 6,000 bucks Canadian. It's not so expensive that you need to choose either to send your kids to college or buy the speakers, but still not pocket change. So why buy the RF7? The horn has that forward front energy, but it is not aggressive as long as you're careful with matching your amplifier. It's just at the right spot for that liveness, unlike the older Klipsch, where it can be a bit too much. The vocals are surprisingly smooth, enough that it sounds pleasant. I mean, if you're someone who likes vocals, surprisingly, the speaker might be for you. Now, I want to take a moment to talk about this, okay? One of the problems I notice when we do A-B tests, we tend to compare detail and resolution. For example, in a test, you might hear, okay, more details of speaker B than the Klipsch RF7. Therefore, you would automatically assume speaker B must be better, right? Sounds as more resolution and more detail. Now, I would say be careful because what really moves us is not necessarily detail and resolution. And although you might find speaker B more detailed than, let's say, the Klipsch RF7, you might appreciate the mid-range of the RF7 more once you actually listen to music. And the reason I say this is because recently I have a friend who upgraded from the 43 to the 44, and he's having a hard time deciding which one he prefers because the 44 has more detail. And as a result, he is having a hard time adapting partially because he's so focused on the detail rather than listening to the music. Now that is a story I'll tell another day. So my point is the mid-range of the RF7, despite being slightly on the forward side, has a certain smoothness to it that many of you will appreciate. So before writing it off, you might want to audition it in an environment you are familiar with. Now our senses tend to be heightened in an A-B test and it can mislead us when choosing what we like. Now the reason I share this experience is because while auditioning the RF7 at my place, it actually got me thinking. This is not a neutral speaker, but boy is it fun to listen to. No boring flat response, it's dynamic, lively, and I think the main strength is the bass. Not boomy bass, not one note bass. The bass is dynamic, tight, but elastic enough you can hear the vibrating skin of the drum. And above all, it goes basement level too deep. There's this song I used to test, Fading Sun. Now in the opening sequence, the subsonic frequency will vibrate your room with the RF7. I played that song on the $20,000 Focus Opera 2. Let's just say the RF7 can keep up, maybe even better. Now granted, I didn't do a serious A-B test, but let's just say when it comes to bass in terms of dynamics, specifically, top three I've ever heard at my place. Any song with bass, fun factor times 10. You don't even need to smoke weed to get the fun factor times 10. Now, what about 44 versus RF7? Now, here for me is the biggest difference. When I played a song, Fading Sun, at my audio buddy's Mark's place on his 44, the rumbling was so faint that I actually asked Mark, hey man, are your speakers broken? I was expecting the room to rumble, but nope. Now, where the 44 does better is the mid-range resolution and texture. Man, you can hear all the emotions in the voice, easily and the vocals can melt your heart. The RF7 is pleasant to listen to, while the 44 stirs up more emotions. Now I noticed the same with the La Scala. La Scala bass is more about bass detail and not about bass dynamic, and that's despite it having a 15 inch woofer. But mid-range, oh my gosh, La Scala mid-range has gold level pixie dust man, magic. Now make sure you have a box of tissues when you listen to music on La Scala.
Now, I guess my message is this. Remember, we are not all clones. So those who prioritize punchy bass might prefer the RF7 significantly over the 44 and La Scala. All right, so now I'm going to jump to my interview with my friends. And the reason why I invited Eric and Manu here today is because he has a pair of La Scala. I'll yep. let him introduce after. And you practically live at his home, listen to it all the time. <laughs> so you know what it can do. For somebody who likes that clipped sound, now how close can the RP7 get to the La Scala? Does it have the same character as well as magic? Mm -hmm. I'm using the Inuus uh, Zen Mini, okay? and uh, I use the, an uh, integrated amplifier, mm -hmm. uh, Musical Fidelity, uh, it's um, uh, M8. And make, uh, so it's about 10G, right? If I remember would, that. Yeah, okay. Exactly. I'm in the living room. My room is treated yeah. uh, by professionals. Yeah. Uh, and I'm right now playing with two sub mm -hmm. woofer from Rhythmix. I have some uh, Mirage M3 at home. Okay. A really plain amp and. Okay, okay. Two sub? Yeah, two sub. Two okay. sub woofer. Right? Yeah. So yeah. you're somebody who likes bass then? I like bass a lot. Okay. Yeah. D didn't you play instruments? I used to play drums, yeah. Okay. I, I played a bit of piano, a bit of a uh, bass guitar, a mm -hmm. bit of a guitar, but mainly drums. Okay. Today what we did, we spent I don't know how many hours. We yep. tried like four or five amps, I think, different combination. Were you guys impressed with the Klipsch RP7 today? Yes, I was. Same thing for me. Why? Uh, overall, it's a really good really good speaker uh, for for the price it is uh, we've heard a lot of speaker in the main in the same kind of price yeah and this one makes everything quite good the um the bass okay the, the bass, bass was was uh, amazing uh, because like i told you right now i struggle at home um that's a month i have my two uh, rhythmic subwoofer it's yes. an 18 inch sub yeah right so i have two yeah. of them and I didn't play with the placement, and we know that's very important. Mm -hmm. I have a relatively big room, yeah. okay, so it will be important. But these speakers are doing some stuff that mm -hmm. I have struggles to reach right now okay. at home. So you're not but getting that bass the, impact, yeah, the, the impact, the, the right? impact. Uh, and also the size of the room can play a lot, as we say, and yeah. the placement of my sub are not done yet. Right. But so far, I mean, here in this room, um, you were able to, to get Mm -hmm. What's something that sometimes I'm not able to have right now? And what about you? Manu? I love bass, and those are really, really nice speakers for that. Okay, so number one, we know that the bass is impressive it with is. it. Yep. Right, especially when we start playing this low note track, and the room start vibrating, and you see this <laughs> big smile on everybody's faces. <laughs> like we played it like ten times today, you know, yep. with different amps to see the result. And did the the bass change with the amps that we try today that it got that some amp you no know, got the better while some amps were like meh you know in terms of bass output i i, I think the bass was good on all the amps mm -hmm. i think i saw a bigger difference in the mids and the eye the, mm -hmm. the bass was generally good some uh, with some eye and uh, amps the the bass was tighter okay um, more precise yeah but the bass was always there electronic music yeah they were giving stuff that i yeah. cannot reach at home mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. but in jazz mm -hmm. and blues mm -hmm. they were giving some stuff but there's something i have at home that they were not always able to give to me i see so i i listened to eric's la scala two times right and um, I remember the first time when I listened to it, I was like, man, these speakers do so many things wrong, man. There's so many things wrong with it if you review it objectively. However, yeah. the mid-range, the presence is second to none. It will draw you in, you either fall in love with it or not. Type. It's, it's the kind of speaker you live forever, right? The okay. presence and so forth. So what does La Scala do better than these? The textures. Mm -hmm. Yep. The micro details, mm -hmm. the emotions. That's the key, by the way, emotions. Man. The emotion. And here, I don't feel that I need a sub at all. Mm. But the bass is controlled, right? Yep. If there's still texture enough, it's not that bloated one-note bass. Do you agree? Yes. So today, what we use, uh, the Patos uh, Kratos, uh, we use it as a preamp, we use it as an integrated amp. We had the Macintosh 462, 
that's like 450 watts of power, 460 watts of power. Uh, we had the Bukhar I-150, we have the Galion TS-120, we have a cheap $600 uh, tube amp, and oh, that we was have, impressive. The, uh, the LP4 <laughs> for the price, yeah. Uh, we have the Exosound uh, streamer, the S82. That, that's like the eight grand streamer. We have the Matrix um, Saber X3. That's a three grand streamer. Uh, we have the Macintosh C2660, which is maybe eight grand again. So, and, and then the Macintosh 6700. So as you can see, we really tried different combination to see how the speaker react, right? And Eric, you were saying that you have to be careful on how you match these speakers. Yep. Why? Why? Because it could it could do from spectacular mm -hmm. to just what you will say, man. Eh. Yes, yes. Uh, tell them the story uh, about when you first came in. We listened to the first system and how it evolved as I start changing it. The liveliness that you talk about. Oh, today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, today um, I don't want to, to, to put any names in, in, yeah. in, in the component we use, at, but at the beginning, let's say, uh, well, you know, that was not good. I mean, there was no emotion, there was no reaction, and you start to change just the preamp, mm -hmm. and poof, it's opening, mm -hmm. more details, uh, we, we heard uh, more dynamics, and, and at, some term, at a certain point of the day, it's like if... Uh, you are opening the door. Mm -hmm. Let's see the other side of the door mm -hmm. where you what you can get with the Eclipse La Scala. Okay. So you are going there in that direction. That's why I need I say you need to be very careful on the matching mm -hmm. because it could be just a normal speaker, mm -hmm. really normal, to wow, there's something there, something very interesting. So we need to be careful about that. But because you, you, you said about the mid uh, the height, sometimes it could be too aggressive, mm -hmm. is, is too much, mm -hmm. and so, sometimes it could just be flat. That's what has impre impressed me today, is about how the characteristic of the speaker mm -hmm. could change mm -hmm. drastically, mm -hmm. depending on what you are throwing in. Okay, so the, the way I usually say that, explain it in my video, is that can a speaker scale up with better electronics, right? As I said before, the Klipsch RP8000F, I reviewed it before, fantastic, fantastic. I had so much fun with it, but it, you put a $10,000 or $20,000 amp, the, diff, it, the, the improvement is just not spectacular. Today, as we improve, we see a, a, you know, a performance improvement. We see what the speakers can do better and more. So, Manu, uh, what was your favorite combination today? Top two favorite combination. Top two, I'd say, uh, well, the the Macintosh we used last. Yeah, the six seven zero zero. I which like is, this one much. Yeah. And I'd have to say the Gavin with those uh, oh. those tubes. So it was a good match then, it right? It was a really good match. Okay. I agree. I like the the, the Macintosh was good, um, and you know I'm not about the brand. Uh, mm -hmm. for, not, not for Macintosh, I mean for any brand. I'm mm -hmm. looking for, for value. And I say, compared to both units, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, I'm agree with Menu, that was the best match uh, for Macintosh. Mm -hmm. And also agree with Menu, uh, mm -hmm. it's not because we're here, but the Galleon was very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other amp uh, e, with the EL34. Oh, the cheap, cheap amp. Very cheap. That was for a layback sound. Yes. Yeah. Something you just want to take a, a drink with your friends and have, have a, you know, discussion. That was very uh, smooth and, and very nice uh, sound. Okay, so yeah. the speaker can change drastically. It's personality, different personality. Different yes. personality. Different yes, and okay. like you were saying though, if you don't have a lot of money for the beginning, it, it, it's a really nice amp to start with those really good quality speakers. Okay, so the, I guess one of the takeaways is that if you can match it well, you can have that live you are there kind of feeling right yeah. that, that's what these speakers are capable of doing and as you say it, it does step in a little bit to the world of la scala 